But we're gonna we're gonna pass over to our next show with which is Mead and Cheese. Welcome to Mead and Cheese. Hello, welcome to Mead and Cheese. We are joined here by Ed, our data analyst. We are also joined by me, DJ Cheese. By the way, I I don't like the horn. I like I like the horn. I don't like the rest of that song. <laughs> um, it's funky. Um, we're also joined by Ewan and Charlotte again. Hello. And Ewan, you are a musician. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you is a bit of critical feedback on that sympathy, sympathy you just heard. <laughs> it's beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful arrangement. Yes. Ewan, we Ewan said it's beautiful. So, and he's a musician. So Ewan has good taste. True. <laughs> and Charlotte, you are joining us again for Mead and Cheese. I know. I'm excited for Mead and Cheese. And I believe you've made a few little quizzes for us today as well. Ooh. I'm going to get you thinking on mead and cheese. And so, let's start the show. Yeah, let's start the show. Do you want me to play the theme song again? Yeah, play it. <laughs> play it again. <laughs> okay. I just need to get it up on the system. There we go. Are you ready for this? You and if you ever want like um, a workshop from Corey about how to make music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, Beethoven has nothing on this. <laughs> I love the Meat horn. And cheese. Demon TV, a spotlight. <laughs> From script writing and producing <laughs> to acting and filming, Demon TV <laughs> will be there to help you. Yeah, visualize. Demon TV will be there to help you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway. So, um, should we should we do the quiz? I'm excited for this. Wait, we got one very important question we have to ask before we start the quiz. Charlotte, Ewan, have you ever tried mead? Yes. I've not tried mead. You've <gasps> not tried mead. Have That's you ever tried cheese? I have tried cheese. Cheese. Yeah. A big fan of cheese. That is a shame. Um, you need to try mead. You do need to try mead. Well, Tom says there's no mead on the show today. We don't have any mead. We're not allowed mead on the show. I, I kind of used up all of my mead storage. Um, I, I, I drank it all. <laughs> and, and with the cost of living crisis, I don't know if is, I can afford much mead it, right now. Has it gone up again in mead? It has gone up again, I think, yeah. Amazon, it, it went up to, what, about £12? <laughs> Wait for yeah, it to I come think back I noticed, down. yeah. yeah it's, it was, it was 8 99 on Amazon. Now it's gone up, um, right back up. So we got beat down that price. But on this show, um, I'll I'll do the mission statement. So you and and Charlotte are aware of what we're all about. On this show, we are continuing our mission to make mead a household item again. With we want you know mead has lost a lot of popularity in the recent decades and centuries, but we are bringing it back. We are bringing it back it's the original alcohol and already this year on this channel we can just look at what we have achieved together we were the most popular show in demon fm we are the most guest show in demon fm we have the most we are the most professional show in demon fm we have eason brought our own mead supplier onto this show and we are making people across this nation bring back mead into their lives we had Leicester as the most searched for place for mead and we also had the biggest we have now this is the most important one we have the biggest radio show about mead in the UK and 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 cheese and possibly the entire world so we've done a lot and I always think we should start the show by just giving us a round of applause well done everyone We've really achieved a lot this year, and but today we're going to be achieving a lot more because meat and cheese are taking their first step in its sustainable future. 
I mean, speaking of Leicester, though, we, uh, you already said that Leicester is the mead capital of the UK. But um, according to our great cheese war, Red Leicester is the greatest cheese in yeah, the world. Yeah, we, we did a... And Ewan is also voted, I think, for <laughs> yeah, Red Leicester yeah. in the cheese war. And he helped turn the tide of this nation's favourite cheese. Like It was uh, plastic cheese, processed cheese. Um, we weren't happy with that. No. I think any cheese is better than processed cheese. I mean, that processed cheese does have its Even place. Even Canonberry? Yeah, Canonberry is way better than processed cheese. Processed cheese does have its place in the ecosystem of cheese, but I also have a feeling it would be really uneco-friendly. I'm thinking of all that single-use plastic because they're usually kind of wrapped in yeah. that. Yeah. I don't think that would be good Not from sustainable. a sustainability pr- perspective, no. Yeah, and exactly. And and what this show is, it's a forward-thinking show. So we decided to take it on ourselves. We re-held a democratic election about what would be people's favourite cheese in the UK and Northern Ireland. And we um, successively turned over plastic cheese and replaced it with Red Leicester. Yes, rightfully so, I would say. So, um, yeah, I want to know more about this quiz. Yeah. So what this is, is we've got a bunch of cards with different kind of scenarios on them, which we can read out. And all you've got to decide is which one do you think puts the most carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So that's what you're trying to decide. And we're measuring it on that because carbon dioxide just is that main gas that is heating up the planet and causing climate change. So I think we've got Ewan who's going to be holding up a bunch of different ones and we've just got to decide which do we think gives off the most CO2. Okay. And I then that's going to take us to that all important most... question. Uh, yeah, I'll do this as well because I can't remember which one's the most for any of these. Okay. So, what do you think is more than one mile on a London bus or one mile on the London Underground? The underground. Um, I'm, I'm going to go... Efficient. So, wait, wait, we're looking for what's, what yeah. releases the most carbon. So, what's worse for the environment, the Underground or a bus? I'd say the bus, because more people can fit onto the underground. So that makes it more sustainable. I, I also, I'm going to back that. I, I also believe that logic. I think I'm going to join the group, yeah. What, the the bus is worse. Are, are we talking as just a mile on a, on a tube releases yep. just flat more CO2? So it's, no, it's, I think it's for each person. It, if you were to travel one mile on the London Underground, on average... Oh, then the bus is worse. Mm. You say the bus is worse? Yeah, we all think the bus is worse, Ewan. <gasps> the London Underground is worse. <gasps> it releases 0.068 kilograms, whereas the bus only releases 0.046. It's all them people breathing on it. Yeah. I think there's quite a lot of electric buses now, isn't there, in London? That's true, yeah. I think they're mostly oh, electric. Yeah. I, I keep right. thinking of the buses back home where they're all really old. <laughs> <laughs> Not the London buses. All right. Yeah, we, in the sticks, we don't get nice things like that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, just by the way, this game that we're playing is called How Bad Are Bananas? And it was created by the charity Future We Want. Just that's what the game is and where it's from. Oh, all right, nice. next one. Actually, we'll do that one. <laughs> one. Hey, what do you think's worse? A large latte cow's milk and a disposable cup or a pint of beer in a pub locally brewed I'm going to say a large latte mm, yeah the latte. I'm, I'm going to go the latte as well there's nothing bad about a pint of beer so you, you can't convince me otherwise <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte I mean I've just been telling everyone how bad disposable cups are so I feel yeah. like I have to go with the cups like, I, th- I think there's many reasons it would be the latte isn't there because you have to get the coffee beans from somewhere Exactly. And, and the cow's milk. The cow's milk. Cows produce a lot of carbon dioxide. That's true. And it is in methane fact methane as well, which is another greenhouse yeah. gas. Yeah, and it then is in fact the latte yeah. <gasps> and the disposable cup as well. So we've got one point, and what sustainability has the other? We're currently drawing. Oh yeah, we got one wrong, and one right. Go on then. A kilogram of average rice. I don't know what average rice is, but. <laughs> or a kilogram of chicken from the UK. It's probably the chicken, isn't I it? I think the chicken. Where's the rice coming from? It doesn't say. It just says average rice. Average Take rice. Take that how you will. Average. 
average. Just the average rice. Average, average rice. You know, <laughs> John Smith rice. Well, yeah, my my granddad has a has a whole warehouse. It's it's a rice field in like a giant greenhouse. Um, obviously. So, <laughs> is that average rice? <laughs> Yeah, average rice made in a giant industrial <laughs> greenhouse in the UK. So is that... We we probably make the rice worse, but I'm assuming that's Ooh. not where well, it is from. Let's find out. It is the rice. <gasps> really? It's four kilograms compared to 3.8 kilograms. So it is from a hypothetical made-up granddad's um, greenhouse, greenhouse yes. industrial greenhouse rice Sound field. Like yeah. <laughs> Right, washing up by hand, but using an extravagant amount of water, or washing up using a dishwasher at 65 degrees. Define extravagant. Well, based off the picture, that that much water. Hmm. A big splash. So it's spilling all over the floor. spilling all over the place. I'm going with dishwasher. Dishwasher's more? Yeah, the dishwasher uses electric as well, doesn't it, so... It could be. But then, if you're using an extravagant amount of water, I feel like you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I'm going to go with the um, the hand washing, I think. Ooh, what do you think, Tom? I, hmm. I think the washing machine's better. I think it's better? Yeah. The washing machine is better nice. by quite a lot it's more yeah, efficient Ma- Maddie's yeah, dad more. once told me how amazing washing machines were and how little water they used when you're saying washing machine do you mean dishwasher oh, so, yes I mean what dishwasher I'm sorry yeah I've, wash it yeah dishwasher how long have I been saying washing machine I don't know I don't know who started it I, it is, I started it I think it's just a washing machine for plates isn't it I suppose yeah. it has the same function but it's just plates D- don't, don't put your plates in a washing machine <laughs> though that, I don't know how well that would go uh, I don't know what would break more, the plates or the washing machine. <laughs> I don't know, because I don't think the cutlery would do the washing machine any good either, would it? No, it wouldn't. <gasps> Can you imagine trying to watch TV when you're washing all your knives and forks? Oh, God. In the tumble dryer. Right, what do you think's worse? A one litre of soya milk or one litre of cow's milk? Cow's milk. I don't know, man. I've seen people milking them soyas and... <laughs> Like, they, they produce a lot of carbon. I, I'm going to go with soya to be different. <laughs> See, I Better think it's cow's soya. milk. It's got to be cow's milk, hasn't it? I think it's got to be cow's milk. Yeah, but milk. Like, like beer, cow's milk is just better. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to put that into <laughs> the so equation. I fully yeah. believe that it just wins. <laughs> I mean, how, how do they make soya milk, though? It has to go through a whole process, doesn't it? I have no idea. They have to breed the baby soya, <laughs> known as um, separate it from the mother, <laughs> milk the mother with, soya. I can't <laughs> like the soya calf. Yeah, they have to separate it for a while, and then they just keep milking mum, mum, big mama soya. <laughs> it's a plant, isn't it? It is a plant. Yeah. A soya bean. A bean. A yeah. bean. So they farm the beans, but are soya beans actually sustainable? Is the question? Well, are they in season? That's the Ooh. question. Is the soya milk in season? <laughs> well, the cow's milk is worse by almost double. Double? That's quite significant, I think. I don't think they accounted for it being in season, though. I don't think they did. I think the average soya milk. Oh, okay. in the big industrial greenhouse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, a bit of a different one. What do you think is worse? An average person per year in, the, in America... Or a 10-minute space tourism flight. I mean, we're talking about the average American. Yeah, here, the so. American, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with that in a year. What do you think, Charlotte? I don't know. I just think about... They've got to launch that rocket into space. That's It'll true. be it's an American, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but, like, Jeff Bezos did a rocket trip, and he's the most sustainable man on the planet. Is he? Is he? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. self-proclaimed. His, his company uses lots of unnecessary packaging. <laughs> they also don't have aircon in their facilities to no, they don't save let, the environment. They don't let <laughs> people go to the toilet. to pay for it because they don't like people. <laughs> they don't let people go to the toilet, so they're not producing as much um, waste in <laughs> that way. True, yeah. yep. That's sustainable. 
Um, and, you know, I've had loads of makeshift recycle bins from their cardboard boxes. So. Oh, yeah, they're the best recycle bin. Mm. That's true. Do you just chuck it out? <laughs> so people saying an average person then? Yeah. I think it's space travel. What do you think, Tom? Uh... I'm going to stick with the American. No, I'm going to. I'm going with Charlotte. I think it's a space travel. It is by quite a lot. <laughs> it's by five Wait, times more. It's only what is that? Twenty-one thousand yeah, kilograms so of carbon. That's only five Americans. That's five <laughs> Americans. Yeah, so to, yeah. to launch a space Over rocket, a year, it takes five Americans. So if we just get rid of, well, I think it's about five and a half Americans. <laughs> And one person for, for each ten space minutes. flight, we get rid of five and a half average Americans. Yeah, sounds good. Th- then we e- well, actually, I think we're in a positive. Ed, you one step away yeah, from works. suggesting genocide to save the planet. <laughs> no, I'm one step away from s- announcing genocide because I like space and it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I go on a ten minute space tourism flight. I mean, space is important though because when we eventually do like yeah. myth the planet, we need somewhere else to go. Yeah, so yeah. we can. Biff that up. I, I mean, we were talking about making our own space space program the other day. Oh yeah, Sundar Space Station. Yeah, yeah. Could we, Charlotte? You're, you know, like we're saying, could we make a sustainable space program in the UK? It would be difficult, I think, to explore space sustainably just because of the amount of fuel and construction that would be needed. But that yeah. doesn't mean that it shouldn't be done. I think what we do is we send up like a biodome to the space station filled with trees and plants why can't we send yeah a biodome but why can't we have a train track that goes up there like we like <laughs> well <laughs> what, one of the ideas the is the tube is yeah. a train track to not space good. yeah but like I'm, what I'm saying is like you can build buildings quite high why, could, why don't we just build one up to the, the atmosphere well, to the, well to the one of the ideas for like more uh, what, what's the term I'm looking for Eco-friendly, yes, yeah, sustainable space travel is to literally build an elevator that is at, uh, far away from Earth that's always above the same point. Yeah. So you can just have a big long rope. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that could work. Yeah. I would you we... want the space elevator like crashing down onto Earth? I feel like. Yeah, that that's be... the big worry. Like, if it, if anyone ever cut the rope. <laughs> Which would be made of carbon nanorods, so um, good luck. But if that happens, it's going to go around the Earth. I, I think it's some, it's like a hundred times or something. Whoa. Wow. Wow. It's really high up. It's like the large intestine. Yeah, except... <laughs> yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to use Corey's lar- well, <laughs> small intestine. The large intestine is the small one. <gasps> oh, yeah. I've been lied to my whole life. To. You have. I did A-level biology. I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> I Not that I paid attention. GCSE. I think Ewan wants to give us right, the next. Should we do the next one? This yeah, one's a bit of an interesting it. one. So, what's worse for the environment or releases more carbon emissions? The UK healthcare annual total emissions so that's for the whole NHS for a year, or the cloud and the world's dent- data centres. Data centres, twenty twenty. That is interesting. So the yeah. NHS is one of the biggest employers as well, so it's going to be quite high. So how much does me backing up my memes in OneDrive affect the planet? Exactly. That is but the, the whole question. world. The whole backing world. Up all of their memes. Downloading meat and cheese at the same time. Yeah. Um, I feel like it probably takes a lot of power to keep those servers going. Yeah. But it's all in the service. Yeah, what, does le- it take more power than the health service? Yeah, because you've got ambulances in the health service. You've got Hospitals. helicopters. You've got, you've got, you know, nurses who are. Uh, you got defibrillators. Yeah. You've every got, time you bring someone back to life, they're going to start breathing again, making yeah, more time, carbon yeah, dioxide. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Could, did, it, did it count for like every time the NHS saves someone, they yeah. go back into the world? And pollute and it. I'm so sick. <laughs> 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 Think about that average person, <laughs> yeah, who produces so much what if carbon they go on a, a year. What space tourism flight <laughs> and they get out? Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm going to go for the NHS. You're going to go for the it's NHS. It's bad for the planet. Stop uh, saving people's Tom. lives. I generally damn right. Without that <laughs> equation, I still think it's the NHS. Just because it's, it, it's a massive employer, they have computers, they have cars, they you know they're, they're doing it in everything. I don't think there'll be as much car 
pollution they do dinners from they'll do your steak cloud dinner. exactly let's find out what do, you, what do you think charlotte i know the answer to this one so oh, I'm you not do. in fact i do as well so i've not i said won't anything. disclose it is the cloud and the world's data sentences what? what? Keeping keeping those the servers cool. The the world. What would that what be about then? the blockchain? Just, just the UK. Because that yeah, that's just the UK. Mm. It's not the whole world. So. Oh okay. Yeah. You've got to think about everything. Everything's what online we, now. What we need yeah. now is to make the NHS go global. To to be fair, yeah, the cloud is a global thing, isn't it? Like it if is. I'm backing up a meme on OneDrive, Microsoft's servers are like all the way over in America. Um, that's that can't be great to do that. Right, we've got one more. Oh, the global military blueprint, total emissions for 2018, or the annual mission, um, annual emissions of a coal mine in Cumbria. The military's boot military. It's got to be military, what? isn't it? Is the blueprint like the military version of carbon footprint? Yeah, I think, so. I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're trying to be like yeah. special and call They've it a boot make it print. A bit fun, haven't they? Are they made that a joke? Oh, I didn't realise. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't catch that either. That's quite cool. So it's not just like someone's boot that they've left <laughs> well, around. It's a soldier's boot. Is, is it? Is it a real boot leather boot that's been made brand new? Because that might cow. be. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah. What was the other one? Uh, the annual mission, uh, annual emissions of a coal mine in Cumbria. I mean, as someone who's else? from a, an old coal mining area, I could tell you that coal mines have never done any harm to the planet, and um, yeah. they they are the best yeah. thing for people in general. Reopen the mines. Yeah, reopen the mines. Th- this lad here, he he got starred as a child. He couldn't go down the mine store and live in. Exactly. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Well, that pits. It is by far the global military boot print for 2018. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Reopen the coal mines. Yeah. Every time you do a Mombo, nuclear Joe. weapons test, I imagine that produces quite a lot. Of quite a lot. Crap. Yeah, in yeah. this book, how how bad are bananas? They have information on lots of these, and they have how they calculate it as well, so you can find out how they calculate the emissions for each one. So hmm. you'll know if it's, you know, if they calculate for the. Ho- Saving a person's life. <laughs> but how bad are bananas? Well, Charlotte, do you want to tell us? Well, with my example earlier, when I had the one kilogram of tomatoes from the UK and the one kilogram of, say, p- bananas from Peru, bananas are better than tomatoes from the UK. Nice. So bananas are good. Bananas and they don't really produce good. any waste as well because their packaging is their own skin that degrades. Yeah, bananas are really good like yeah. that. You know, However, yeah, that's if you the eat thing, enough bananas, you'll get radiation poisoning. Oh, and that, that's a whole different kind of pollution, really, if you become radioactive. Pollution of yourself. Well, if it kills you, because that reduces, again, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 21,000 kilograms per year. Well, we're not the average American. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that's true. Okay, maybe some 10, credit. I don't have my laptop just <laughs> idling next to me. <laughs> 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 I I don't leave the Xbox on overnight. <laughs> so <laughs> to I download think, a game. Sorry, I was busy burning my coal fireplace. Can you repeat <laughs> that? <laughs> See, I think the really important question for this particular radio show is: what is worse for the environment, mead, mead or cheese? <gasps> now, before everyone, before you give us any answer, shot, we'll put that on a Twitter poll as well. Yeah, let's Ooh, yeah, let's see, yeah, what, let's the see what the public audience think. say. Do you know the answer? We, I do know the answer to this. We one. should you also go show. into another song. Yeah, we probably should. We've yeah, been here for um, <laughs> 20, almost half an hour. Right. So, <laughs> my lovely audience, please have a little think. What is Shark, What is the question again? What is worse for the environment? So, what gives off more carbon dioxide, mead or cheese? Yes, have and think we will be putting up a Twitter poll in a just a second. Twitter poll, and then we're going to give our uh, penny of thoughts in. Of course, and we're going to. But next yeah. up, a throwback to when we did our Transformers special is the Transformers theme. Welcome back to Mead and Cheese. That was Drift Vale City from the Pokemon Black and White game, uh, which came out on the DS uh, at some time in the 2010s. Uh, how is everyone in the studio? Yeah, all good, I think. Yeah? Good. Ed? Some nice cold water. I'm super sleepy. Super sleepy. I, I was out quite late and then went back to a friend's place and stayed out even longer. Charlotte? I think I had two hours of sleep. 
I'm loving being on the radio. I feel very special. It's my first time on radio today. It, it does give you this special feeling being on the radio. It's almost like, um, yeah, I think mead and cheese is just special in itself because you have the uh, Pokemon show. soundtracks yeah. that no other radio show plays. Yeah. Well, there's a reason they don't play the Pokemon soundtrack, but we are a magical <laughs> show here. Um, yeah. So, Ewan, how are you finding your first time on radio? I'm finding it pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Would you say it's the best thing you've ever done? It's definitely up there. I... Definitely see, up there. I love being in the radio station because I just... You're a sound person. The, the actual sound of the room is really refreshing. Yeah, yes, I agree. Yeah. It feels very clean. So, you have never tried mead? I've never tried mead. At some point, we will need to fix that. We will. You can go to Morrison's yeah. and buy some for cheap. Yeah. I'll have to get some yes. on the way home. The, the, we wouldn't recommend it, but with the current climate of the cost of living crisis, uh, Morrison's... You'll have to make sacrifices. Morrison's... No, 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 no. No, no, <laughs> I can't allow you to recommend the Morrison's mead. <laughs> it's it's so bad. It's, what would you say is the it best It tastes like mead? poison. If you've never had mead before, <laughs> you'll mead. think, that, oh yeah, this is fine. Then you have good meat. The thing is, you try yeah. it, and then you find out that it gets better from here. Uh, no, you, you try it, and you think, this is terrible. I'm not having meat again. Corey, that's because you were started on the wine straight from yeah. the bee itself. Yeah, yeah. When you've been sucking off the bee. <laughs> uh. Well, you, you know, <laughs> sucking off the bee is the best way to get your mead. It's so graphic. But, um, <laughs> no, I... I when you've had fjord mead, no other mead hits fjord, the same. Fjord, fjord mead is something else. Um, like for me, even lime bay's mead doesn't hit the same anymore since we had fjord mead. Yeah. Well, I really want to, the thing is with fjord mead is I knew that that bit he gave us was the only bottle on that planet. Yes. You know, you know that that was it. You know that was the only bottle, oh. and. Uh, this a bit of contents here. We had a mead supplier come on our show. Fueled mead. Yeah, fueled mead, and he just started starting out. He's been doing it for a few years, I think he yeah. said. Yeah. So yeah, we we brought on uh, my mate Connor Delia from yeah. uh, back home in Ashfield, um, who is a local mead maker. Owns the Fjord Meadery, making Fjord mead. And Tom, was it not the best mead you've ever had? Yeah. Yeah, like so. Normally, mead's quite sweet, but this one wasn't as sweet. But mm. it had that really like earthy taste to it. Um, I think that's because of the yeast in it. It, it was quite yeah. yeasty, yeah. And I really liked that. I was like, "Oh, that is very nice." I, I, I was like, "Yeah." It was like it was just like it was like someone. It had like the feeling of someone, you know, the smell of like freshly baked bread. Yeah, that's what that's what his drink felt like. Yeah, not the taste, but the smell. Felt like the smell. Yeah, it, it, it felt like the smell. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and much like how bakers get their bread straight from the tea to big mother, mama, big mama bread. <laughs> Conadelia milks the bee himself. Sucked he goes off up the to days, Queen yeah. Bee, and he milks it for that royal jelly. Yeah, I'm so glad you caught a photo of the moment I said royal jelly. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to our Twitter poll, we have put up a Twitter poll because this is the sustainability special of mead and cheese. So. And um, the poll asks, what is worse for the environment, mead or cheese? Hashtag sustainability, hashtag eco smart, hashtag eco friendly, hashtag radio, hashtag student radio, hashtag student, hashtag DMU, hashtag Leicester, hashtag green, hashtag COP26, hashtag Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. At Idris Elba. So, <laughs> do you want to just repeat that in case anyone missed it? So yeah, what's worse for the environment, mead or cheese? Uh, the current results have cheese <laughs> in the lead with sixty-six point seven percent of the votes. Ooh, okay. So I suppose we're going to start debating that now. I suppose we probably should. So yeah. there's two big figures on this. There's the, there's the big mighty cheese which has been in the world since the dawn of time. And the big <laughs> mighty mead, which is the first alcohol ever discovered. I mean, I think that's yeah. been around since before the dawn of time. Before the dawn of time, probably, yeah. Possibly before um, 
I don't know anything before the Big Bang, probably. Pro- probably, yeah. maybe the Big Bang was to create mead. But anyway, um, so these two fighting out are gonna. One of them we're gonna have to get rid of at the end of the show. It, this is either gonna be mead or cheese show. Mm-hmm. So we've got to cut one. Who? Which one is not sustainable? We've got to sh- we've got to cut off that uh, rotten leg. <laughs> would would you tune into a radio show just called Cheese? No, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tune into a radio show called, called just called Mead either. Uh, what if, what if you tuned into a radio show called William Cheese? William Cheese. Yes, I have. What? <laughs> what about? You know, I just realised I did the joke wrong. Richard Cheese. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't understand. <laughs> what? 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 I get Richard. It. What's oh, a short no. one for Richard? Ed's being gross. I, I, I've had very little sleep. I'm super tired. <laughs> Door handle this cheese. This room is really cosy. I want to go <laughs> bed. Anyway, I, I'm i going to say bed off the bat... rhymes with Ed. I think cheese is probably the lesser state. But then again, there's bees as well, so... Bees are endangered, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So it, but having... Does that mean that making mead makes bees better off because that gives them a bit to do? I mean, if you are... <laughs> Providing employment for employment bees. For bees yeah. Yeah. It depends. If you're a beekeeper who's making your own mead and you're, you know, breeding bees and keeping them safe, yeah. surely that's better for the planet than letting all the bees die? Yeah, because from all the beekeepers I've met, they've all been, like, very, like, lovely gentlemen. That I think beekeepers, most of them care about the sustainability of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Do, do you think the same about that with, you know, cheese? Whether well, cheese mongers, the cheese mongers. Yeah. Do yeah. they are they thinking about sustainability of the cows? Well, you see, cows are one of the biggest polluters on the planet, aren't yeah. they? Mm. Um, Is this all cheese as well? It's the average cheese. The average yeah. cheese. We've got so the average, yeah, UK so cheese. Yeah, so you read a kilogram of your average cheddar. UK cheese and a so kilogram of your average UK meat. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's so like a kilogram of cheddar versus a kilogram of mead. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot yeah. of mead. No wait, that's only a liter of mead, isn't it? Yeah, that's not enough mead. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, a kilogram. A kilogram. A kilogram would be more than a liter, wouldn't it? A kilogram it? is equivalent to a liter. What of mead? Well, a, a kilogram of water is a, a, is a liter of Water. So you'd assume mead would be heavier, actually, wouldn't you? The honey. It's got yeah, more you'd in think it. that, but come on, it is essentially the same. About, yeah. Maybe we should ask Connor. He's a mead monger. The mead man. Yeah, I feel like if, if, if mead is more less sustainable, then we should tell Connor that he has to stop making mead. He needs to stop making cheese. Yeah. yeah. I think cheese is a more complicated process, though. I'd, I'd think so, because when yeah. you're making mead, you... Like the store honey. cheese as well. Yeah, cold has to be cold. Sure. Is store yeast cheese. sustainable? Well, they store a lot of cheese in um in caves and stuff. Same with mead. I I isn't per- the fermentation process produce CO two? Because isn't that what fermentation mm, not is? Not with mead. Not with mead. Because uh, mead no. is bubbly. Yeah, mead is oh. me- mead is just perfect. No, it, it might do. When you when you ferment in, what what do you get? You um, do it in a closed system. The alcohol is created from the yeast and the sugar mixing together. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. I just googled it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so yeah, CO two would be created as a byproduct of that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so the numbers we're looking at, they are According to BBC yeah, Bite Size, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to trust BBC Bite Size. Yeah, and Corey's uh, AS in, or A-level in biology. Yeah, but um, what what is the real question is, does it produce more carbon dioxide than cheese mm, and no. the cow? Uh, and the public are saying that cheese does mm. they're saying it does and I, i'm inclined to, i think i'm inclined think, yeah. to agree with them to be honest the packaging as well for cheese yeah it's plastic yeah it's plastic packaging. the packaging for me is either um is just glass bottles isn't it well that depends how the mead's been brewed it it's might cl- have been brewed in a big plastic tub quick question to you charlotte <laughs> the chinese ones <laughs> the yeah, chinese tupperware, tupperware. Tubs, yeah. <laughs> is mead in a glass bottle would that be better than mead in a carton well, I know this data from wine. 
But if you get a carton of wine or a box of wine, that is actually better for the environment than getting a bottle of wine because bottles are heavier, so it increases the carbon emitted when you're transporting the wine. And they're also glass is harder to recycle than some of the materials that are used in the cartons. I suppose it, if it's like green glass. I suppose it depends as well. If you've got like a um, plastic jug of mead, is that a new plastic jug that you've gone out and bought, or are you like reusing a milk jug? Yeah, because that would be more sustainable, wouldn't it? Reusing yeah. stuff. Mm. Yeah. Also, you know, you got to think about delivery as well. Like, like um, for for like cheese that we sometimes import it from a different country, so we're importing it. But for mead, we get Connor Daly to come down <laughs> from sh- sh- mean, and bring it to us. I mean, we've imported mead before. We we had an Irish mead on. Yeah. Um. One one of the episodes and that wasn't the best mead but you know <laughs> yeah we did import it yeah i i i generally think cheese would be a more polluting thing i'd agree yeah i i think so no no one's like pushing to get vegan mead so i think we have a conversation about vegan mead on here we, yeah, we there did is, yeah. there is vegan mead i think yeah. it's yeah. made Not with that. agave nectar yeah something oh. like that it's, yeah. Not, it's not honey though no, it, oh, we. Yeah. I think we said it's it's not technically mead. Yeah, it's it would like be it's mead, but it, it, it's it, the it's like pear it cider. It's not cider, but it's like it's cider perry. with pears. Yeah, yeah it's perry. So, it's wrong. so agave but mead is just <laughs> what merry. Merry, yeah, maybe. <laughs> cool. Who knows? So, do we, do we have the answer? Yeah, do we want the or answer? Or should we reveal it at the end when at more the end. of the poll the yeah. results have come out? Yeah, we've got to keep me awake somehow. Cool. I, I agree. So, um, does anyone have a song request? Uh, I, Charlotte, you, do you have a song request? I've already requested a song. It's, it's Ewan's oh, turn. I don't have one on, on the top of my head. You can think of one. Yeah, I was actually going to say that, year 3000. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Does it? Are we just gonna sit here? Hello, welcome back to Mead and Cheese. <laughs> we, just have- we are doing the sustainability special. So he- he- hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sustainability. We were talking earlier. It might have been um, on the filmmaking podcast that we spoke about this. No, it wasn't. It was part of the game. Um, cloud storage. You said was um, worse for the environment than the NHS. Yes. So what I want to know is what's worse, streaming or Blu-rays. Blu-rays. Yeah, find out, Charlotte. I'm trying to see. Because, like, you would assume it's Blu-rays, but then when you were saying that, you know, cloud storage so, yeah, sto- yeah. It, it uses so is much cloud carbon. Storage, but I'm going with um, what's better, and quite frankly, streaming is far superior to Blu-ray. Are you just talking about that as, like, from an experience? Oh, yeah, view? because, like, it, it, you can ha- like, I have friends who, between them, had, like, 1,500 DVDs in their flat and Blu-rays. And that is too much. I love a good Blu-ray. But the thing is, I can get anything on the internet. That's true, but does that And a lot of the time, I haven't paid for it. Here's the question, though, yeah. If you own a Blu-ray, that Blu-ray is going to last for a while, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that is, you know, I've bought Revenge of the Sith on Blu-ray. And I can watch that whenever. Yeah. Or if I stream it and I have to pull it from that server every time I want to get it, does that add up to being worse mm. over time? I don't know because I. That is a good question. If you put it on the server, then I'm pretty sure that that's uh, you know, it. The que- I think the question will be: Is a hundred people watching um, a video from Netflix on a server? Is that better than a hundred people having that DVD? Now, I think mm. that matters if you're going to keep the DVD. It's like, then that, if you're going to say, I'm keeping this Blu-ray as part of my collection, and you don't get rid of your collection because it's something you have pride on. I don't really think that 
has too much effect but if you're constantly buying dvds all the time then surely that would be more plastic pollution than the well, server not necessarily because what you're doing with the dvds if you're just throwing them in the bin after you've bought them yeah but i assume you're like taking them back or they go to a charity if, shop. If you're not keeping depends, them. It depends if you're the sort of person who trade. Right. I trade in. I trade in everything. I don't mm. I don't give away nothing for free. But some people might give away yeah. DVDs. Cause I've mean, seen DVDs in like the dumpsters. <laughs> uh, I, just today I walked out and I had to, to like brush through DVDs to get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no one wants DVDs yeah, anymore. No one wants they will them. pay you to take them. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So but, I've um, just had yeah. a look, and I'm quite shocked with the actual answer, you know. Yeah. Ooh. So this is from 2014, so things might have changed since 2014. But they've looked at how much CO2 is given by streaming something in comparison to renting a DVD by mail, going to, like, a Blockbusters and getting a DVD, yeah. mm-hmm. um, driving to the shop to buy a DVD and then watching it, or then um, kind of purchasing it through the internet and streaming is about equal to getting a dvd by mail or purchasing it like through the internet so if you're buying your dvds online and not driving to a shop there's not much in it carbon mission wise so when i go to the local charity shop and pick up ghost rider 2 on blu-ray for a pound that is better for the environment than streaming it in some cases yeah nice can't Another count. win for physical formats. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that is, it's interesting because I would have thought it was the other way around. But You'd think so at first, yeah. wouldn't you? But it was just yeah. the mention of servers using up so much carbon yeah. that made mm. me think, what if well, Blu-rays are actually good for the planet? Let, let's stop streaming and let's let's cancel our subscriptions. Let's um, let's go back to VHS. Yeah. 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 VHS. Yeah, the only way forward. Than DVD. Probably not. They're like really big, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, they they fu- they would be far Trunky. worse. Yeah. Um, yeah, they must be worse. Unless you like reusing old VHSs, repurposing them. Someone once tried to argue with me about why VHS is the superior format, and I just sort of looked at them blankly. <laughs> it has because <laughs> they're an idiot. Has a certain effect. Uh, you know how um, Zack Snyder's Justice League was released in four by three. Uh, it just made me think, I would love to own a VHS of this film. <laughs> the you problem is with videos have. is they're so old that no one's ever really looked into the carbon footprint of videos. Like, there's not really anything I can I can find. Yeah, no one cared about carbon until, like, 2005. I don't know, because there used to be these um, big promotions like Plant a Tree, because it's 73, and that was in the 70s. Oh. Yeah, but that's just because people liked trees. <laughs> <laughs> They're just big tree fans in the 70s. Yeah. yeah. What, well, are we not big tree fans now? No, we hate I trees. I use a kosher. I plant trees. <laughs> well, I don't, let's be honest. But <laughs> It's all about the oak. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, going back to our poll, uh, what is more sustainable, or what is worse for the environment, mead or cheese... The consensus seems to be 80% of the votes, cheese is worse for the environment. I just voted. You just voted? I voted cheese. You voted for cheese. Oh, I might have to go on and vote for However, cheese. Charlotte in the break brought up a good point about the amount of glass bottles produced for mead. Mm. And um, we were also discussing about the home brewing aspect and whether that makes it less efficient and therefore worse for the environment. So I don't know, there still might be something for mead. Yeah, mead Because remember, be you're producing CO2 with a fermentation, you're putting it in a glass bottle. Transporting mm-hmm. the glass bottle. It's and not yeah. the most efficient process, is it? Because it's quite um, small, isn't it, mead production? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. because again, mead doesn't come directly from the bee. It, it's a it doesn't come directly the from bee. the bee. But nor does cheese come directly from the cow. Yeah, it, it does. does. <laughs> it, it, it's a, like... <laughs> Like they make the honey, but then you have to work the honey. You can't. They don't. They don't just make mead. I wish they would. <laughs> I wish you could train them to make the honey like, and work the bee. Yeah, like but, I we, just a little side note on mead and cheese. I wish animals could like do a bit more function. Charlotte today was saying she saw you have a cat, don't you, Frank? Mm. And you saw Frank's restaurant. 
And you thought, oh, I'll send it, take a picture of this and show you Frank when he gets home. <laughs> and then I realised that he would he would not care about a picture of a, a restaurant in, in town. Because he did, would not understand because he's a cat. <laughs> but I wish he would have because that would have been really cool. <laughs> there, there was a clip online that I saw of a cat thinking it was playing Minecraft. Oh. <laughs> it was it was like scratching at the screen while the person playing was breaking the blocks, which was quite <laughs> fun to see. Our cat used to watch Meerkat Manor and chase the meerkats. <laughs> <laughs> Just run face first into the TV. <laughs> well, well, not quite that bad, but yeah. Um, so, what is worse for the environment? Using an old CRT TV on a regular basis or buying a new flat screen? I would say... Wait... Is this buying a new flat screen each time you want to watch TV? <laughs> <laughs> Every single time buy a new flat screen or use an old one. I, I love my old CRT TVs <laughs> and my VHS tapes. Because they technically they would be less efficient, wouldn't they? They would use more energy. Like yeah. the screens but you're using are something efficient. you yeah. already have. But you, yeah. yeah, you walk past them and all the static just jumps onto you. <laughs> you're not selling this, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Like, for one thing, I have to rewind the movie that I want to watch from the start. Yeah, for another good. thing, my TV might give me eye cancer. <laughs> it's part of the charm. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I might get irradiated, but that's so retro. <laughs> um, yeah, C- are CRTs bad for the planet, is my question. Oh, no. Let's have a look. Because um, the, the old cafe ray tube is um, it's it's a pretty thing to behold, isn't it? And while we're just waiting for that answer, um, remember on Demon FM you can vote in our poll. You can vote for mead or cheese on which one is worse for the environment. And also earlier today we were promoting. Uh, the event at DMU, which Charlotte is doing about sustainability, where you can learn loads of sustainability skills, and it's all for free. <laughs> and yes. there won't be any cheese there, because uh, I think they're only doing vegan sandwiches, but there might be vegan cheese. Who knows? There might be vegan cheese. We we had a vegan cheese on for the Veganuary special, I believe, and we all yeah. agreed that it tasted like feet. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, a, a it was. It wasn't a nice vegan cheese. Feet. It was not nice. Yeah, some vegan food is fine. Like sausages tend to be fine. Yeah, sausages. Bacon, I refuse to ever. Eat. I've never no, tried bacon. Almost. I refuse to eat it out of principle. Bacon looks weird, but um, I did have turkey yeah. bacon, and that was quite nice. Yeah, but it's not pig. It's it's not vegan, but it's. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely I, I not assume, vegan. I assume turkey's better than pork. Y- y- you know, yeah. I don't know. how much you like turkeys I and have, how much you like pigs. I am of the opinion that I am of the food. Opinion. I am of the opinion <laughs> that food does in fact taste better if it had a mum. Yeah, I, I would be inclined to agree. Anyone going to disagree <laughs> with that statement? I disagree. <laughs> so Tom, how's your fish fingers? I actually have they vegan had a mum fish. once. I have vegan fish fingers. I'm sorry, you what now? I have. Yeah, have you ever tried vegan fish fingers? No, that sounds stupid. They're, they're all right. They taste exactly the same. Have you tried the yeah, um, vegan the Cadbury's stuff. dairy milk? I've not. No. What? It, it's like made with almonds instead of oh, um, I don't like milk. Almonds. But it, it tastes nice, you know. <laughs> it tastes like a bar of chocolate, wouldn't you believe? <laughs> <laughs> You'd hope I, so. I did once have chocolate cakes that were made with aubergine. Aubergine. I think nice. that was the bonding agent. Oh, it's bad news for your CRT TV, unfortunately. Really? So the typical CRT TV produces 339 pounds of CO2 per year, but then it obviously the bigger the screen, the higher that number. I have some pretty massive CRTs. And then, because of today's TVs being much more efficient, they produce around like 150, so it's almost double as bad. So it is better for the environment for me to replace my CRT? 
Yeah, with a with a new TV. Yeah, especially if you've got like a second hand flat screen. And keep it for a long time. And keep it for mm. a long time. Wow. Well, I'm not getting rid of my CRTs, <laughs> but it's, it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how much damage you're going to be doing every time you put it on. Like, try getting a CRT nowadays. No one wants them. It's better to ask forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play retro games in the way they were intended to look. I oh, know, it's, it's Corey, always a no. <laughs> Anyway, the poll is still cheese is the public's choice for what is worse for the environment. Uh, we've made only 20% of the voters think that mead is bad for the environment. So I think consensus is on cheese. Yeah, maybe we should also put out an Instagram poll and see how people vote on that. That is a good idea. We idea. haven't done an Instagram poll in a while. We haven't. Since, we- since the end of the Great Cheese War, I <laughs> forgot about social media but luckily <laughs> enough um nothing was important after that <laughs> <laughs> but lucky enough no, we're gonna true. have a great cheese war next week we're gonna have the great breakfast war where we're gonna fight off different types of, of all-day breakfast from around leicester and i think we're gonna do we might do another one where we fight off different types of breakfast like cereal versus uh, all-day breakfast so you know it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting time it's not necessarily meat and cheese but it is in the realm of our interests while we're there what's your favorite cereal Wheatos. Ooh, that's a strong one i am um... yeah, i like crunchy nut that is that is like nut. the chad's choice yeah I like the ones which are little squares and they're cinnamon. Oh, I know what you mean. Cinnamon squares. <laughs> and they like craves or something. Something like that. They're oh, yeah, like craves. The crave, yeah. Yeah. Craves. I also like a cereal person. I also like the chocolate <gasps> yeah. squares. I quite like the multigrain hoops. I think cereal's nicer if it's a square. Unbranded, of course. I just don't understand. It kind of hurts the inside of your mouth if you get, you know, when you get a corner. Yeah, it gets like the top of your. Yeah, you want it. You want it to be circular, like Wheatos. No, no, no. You wait. You wait. You got to have patience, man. Yeah. Or maybe you want your cereal to be spherical for for a while. My cereal of choice has been Mm. malted wheats, the Shreddies Tesco version base choice but the thing is after a while you sort of sit down one day look down at what you're having for breakfast and go <laughs> i'm eating brown i am only eating this because of its fiber content i am only eating <laughs> there this is no so that pleasure. nanas don't go out of business <laughs> I, there is no pleasure derived from this series <laughs> so, so i am now going to move over to multi-grain hoops as of tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> no, there's lots of pleasure to be had from the knitted by Nana's malted wheats. Yeah, but, but these, these because are one, the Tesco's ones, because not one, the ones owned by Nestle. Because one, Nana knitted it especially for you, Ed. Nestle. And she did, she did it. <laughs> she knitted it for you. <laughs> and two, All of them. And I two, refuse <laughs> to buy products made by Nestle. <laughs> and two, you put about Unless it's five error, tablespoons really of sugar on it and you're good to go. You don't Five even realise it's brown. Maybe they just get the frosted ones then. <laughs> they don't do them. They don't do them. I can't find them. I don't like frosted cereal. I like putting ten spoons of sugar you on it. You don't like frosties? But no, they're I, great. I, <laughs> they're not just great. They're great. But, no, frosties, nah. Cornflakes with lots of cereal on. Like an excessive amount of cereal, like it looks like someone cornflakes with an put it out in the snow. Of cereal on. Nut. <laughs> no, it's crunchy nut. Sugar, an excessive amount of sugar on it, so it looks like someone left it out in the snow. That's you know, the best. If you wanted to like really spice up your cereal, there is other things that could make it look like it snowed on it that you could put on. Like when you um suck off the bee and get the honey. Yeah. Uh, you could pour some honey on your cereal. You could. That's nice. Honey and porridge. Forget cereal. Porridge is where it's at. My mum has porridge. Get on and off porridge. Sometimes I just can't stomach it. See, I, th- I think of it sick. like the malt wheats. <laughs> some, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you sort of just porridge. look down and like, I'm only eating this for the health benefit. This yes. isn't any pleasure. <laughs> That's why, you know, you get your porridge... And then you go into the cupboard, you get your um, Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate Spread. 
you take a massive spoon of it, throw it into the porridge, mix it around. Now you've just got like chocolate slop, and it's great. <laughs> Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate slop. slop. I'm sorry. Do you do you think? <laughs> have you thought about what that looks like? It looks like brown, but it tastes nice. <laughs> my mum once made a soup, which my sister quite creatively ne- named diarrhea soup. <laughs> it was that exact shade of brown, <laughs> and the worst bit was my sister picked up her spoon. Lifted it above the bowl and then tipped it down again, <laughs> no. dribbling it in back into the soup. It was a very nice soup, but my mum's never made it since. <laughs> <laughs> Diarrhea soup is like a perfect descriptor for what the chocolate spread porridge looks like. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Although maybe I, I more chunky want, than I never diarrhea. want to be around you for breakfast. <laughs> I had to look at the sustainability of cereal because I thought, is it bad? Is it good? It's better than like meat for breakfast cereal. It's got a lower carbon footprint, but you got to think twice about what grains are going into your bowl because think things like corn and wheat are the least sustainably produced yeah. agricultural crops. Ooh. So, so no cornflakes then. No cornflakes. Crunchy nuts so off the table. Wheat or wheat shreds. I'm guess yeah. So cornflakes, no frosties. But wheatos are fine. What? What yeah. shape Corn is and wheat. what just shape wheat. is more sustainable? Oh, is wheatos actually made is from wheat? Where? It's like or chocolate just, hoops. It's called wheatos. Or wheatos. Wheatos. Or no, wait. So we can have oatabix, but what, what not wheatabix. Best sustainable. Is where are the wheatabix? I think which which cereal comes in a natural shape that hasn't had to be shaped by cocoa pop. Well, muesli. Well, what uh, what uh, <laughs> uh, would the, probably be the most sustainable shape? Well, well, bran what, flakes. What, what are they called again? Or <laughs> <laughs> knitted? Shreddies. Shreddies. They're knitted by old women, so surely that's quite sustainable. Yeah, yeah but old women breathe a lot. Because, of course, so. you, knit things, <laughs> you knit things with wool, which is grown on sheep. Yeah, so they're not even, you know, they're much more bad for the environment than any other cereal. So is porridge more sustainable than cereal, then? I'd say so, yeah. Another win that's for chocolate point. slop. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to ever be around you for breakfast. <laughs> it sounds like an experience I don't want to have. I mean, yeah. Uh, I had what did I have for breakfast today? I had corned beef and egg on toast. Corned beef and egg on toast. It was very nice. I had plant chef sausages from Tesco's and egg. Because mm. you know I want to be healthy and save animals, but I don't want to be- give up and be a vegan man. I want me egg. I, I want me egg. I had quavers. For breakfast, Wait. yeah, and I had quavers <laughs> for lunch. What were you having for dinner? Like, uh, you're finishing quav- the bag of quavers. <laughs> quavers. Yeah, no, I had like cheese quavers in the morning, and about a few hours later, I thought, oh, I'll have another bag of quavers, and I had prawn flavored quavers. Oh, which are all right. And then, then no, I there's pot- only one flavor of quaver. Then I did break it with a pot noodle. cheese. Yeah. Have you ever tried uh, salt and vinegar at Quavers? I have. Yeah. Yes, it's weird. It's strange. It, it feels like weird. it shouldn't taste like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we've been Qua- conditioned. Original flavoured Quavers are, are brilliant, crisp. We've had another vote for mead on the oh. poll. Oh. Which, I mean, cheese is still very much in the lead, but mead has um, has oh, some way. backers for worst polluter. I mean, whichever one wins, surely that's going to be our doom. But yeah. what you could do is put forward a sustainability plan to try and create a sustainable mead and cheese. Well, I know we have sustainable mead on the show. And you can always have your cartons of mead instead of bottles of mead. Yeah, but no one sells cartons of mead. That's the problem. I, I did once get a mead. carton, or my mate got a carton of cider from a man in the shed in a shed in yeah. South Wales. <laughs> See, that that so we could start doing this because that sounds yeah. exactly like how I want my alcohol brewed. Give us, give us that <laughs> guy's <laughs> name, and we'll get him to make us mead as well. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll ask Jason where we got it. <laughs> That sounds like a really great idea. So, Connor Daly. Con- Con- Daly? Delia. 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 I think he reuses his glass bottles. Yeah. So yeah. that would make it more sustainable. He, he is very sustainable. I, I, I think. I think he, like the only influence because we don't really have influence over the big, the big dogs of the mead brewing world, like Lime Bay, 
I can't think of any of Morrison's. Um, <laughs> But we, gold. but we could talk to Connor about taking on sustainable a- efforts when he comes down to bring us meat again. Yeah, I mean, we could ask him what he's what he's doing to make fjord mead more sustainable. Yeah. And yeah. Um, obviously, I'm sure reusing his bottles is probably a good start. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah we're going to go to a song break now. Uh, the greatest song ever made, Temporary Secretary by Paul McCartney. Um, and after that, we will discuss more sustainability things. Corey, yeah, do you want to be my plus one? I'll take plus two one seats. for what now? Uh, watching a film that I did music for. Uh, what is the film? That's his film. <gasps> Tom's film. Oh, yeah. Also, I do really enjoy how there's a screen between me and Corey, so we can't actually see each other. So it's just like we're talking into the void. Who is this man <laughs> who speaks to me? So yeah, we- I'd be interested in seeing Tom's film with music by Ed from the Ed Show. I mean, I think. On um, June the ninth. No, we are no, no. This is oh. this is a different thing. We we've got um, sh- like we're showing off work we've done this time in Pace. Yeah, nice. And we, well, me and Eddie have both put down like the films that we've worked on. Yeah. I was in a film. Don't it was called. So um, you got do, you did a screening. Yeah. What yeah, was we're it doing called? A screening in Pace. Dead Air by director Kieran Shea. Um, ah. It was it was a f- it is a phenomenal film. Yeah, uh, I must say the guy who played Pat um, was an extraordinary actor. <laughs> um, yeah. So, just in case we get kicked out of the studio early, I think it'd be a great time now for Charlotte to advertise an upcoming opportunity. Oh, yeah, the Sustainable Futures Workshop. Yes. So, on Monday, I am going to be back at um, De Montfort University in the Queen's Building running a Sustainable Futures Workshop. This is with Change Agents UK, which is an Oakham-based charity that focuses on giving young people knowledge about sustainability and the skills that go along with that. This workshop is at 10.30 and it runs until 4, but we are providing sandwiches there, so there will be food. So you will learn about what sustainability is, what are some important skills to become more sustainable, and also how to kind of get a career in sustainability or use really important skills to be more sustainable in your own career. So there's lots of interesting things you could learn from this free workshop that is open to all DMU students. And you said that you get a certificate as well? Yes, there is a digital certificate that you will receive at the end of completing this workshop, so at four, and then you can use that in job interviews or on your CV or when you're applying for other courses. Nice. So is this like a recognised qualification then? So it's not an accredited qualification, it is just like a useful CPD um, kind of experience, so just some continuing professional development. So it is something that we've done at quite a lot of different universities, Mm -hmm. so Edinburgh Uni, we're at Leicester University the following Monday, so we've been going around to lots of different universities to offer students this particular qualification, just because employers really like people with that knowledge of sustainability. Well, it sounds like a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're a DMU student, get yourself down to yeah. the Queen's Building on Monday and, yeah, get yeah. yourself the sustainability and knowledge and skills that yeah, you need. And not just for the CV, but like there's a lot of inter- interesting information what we've discussed on this show, and I think if you've enjoyed hearing some of that, you could definitely expand your knowledge by going to this, and I think it would be very valuable just to know these things in general. Of course. So since we're coming up, to nearing the end of the show yeah should we find out which is worse for the planet mead or cheese yes is it that time do, what do we think in here what do we think is worse cheese than- cheese uh, I, yeah i'm cheese. gonna go cheese as well so we're all yeah, gonna I'll, go cheese no i'll go mead you so and it's the lone just, person yeah. saying mead <laughs> i feel like mead's feeling a bit lonely everyone voting for cheese right so Everybody except Ewan is correct. <laughs> cheese is worse for the environment than me. So if you voted cheese, you are correct and you have excellent sustainability knowledge. So put in numbers to it. Let's have a look. For a kilogram of cheddar produced in the UK, that produces 
eight kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of the product. So that's 11. So this kind of list of numbers I've got here doesn't have a number for mead, but it does have numbers for wine, which is, I assume, similar to mead in production. And the kilograms of CO2 produced for wine is just two. So 11 for cheese, two for wine. Even if we just add the carbon footprint of honey directly to that to try and get a more accurate figure, the carbon footprint of honey is also two, two kilograms of CO2. So, so overall, cheese is yeah. twice as bad. So the moral of this story is eat less trees and drink more. That is definitely the moral of this I story. I like this moral. So, we, so we're assuming that mead is four kilograms of carbon. Yeah. So, so mead is twice as bad as wine, is what well, we're thinking. Well, that's only because I've directly added honey to the wine. Yeah, but d- does it have a number for grapes in there? Does it have that's a number true. for grapes? That's a very interesting question. Let's have a look. Grapes is 1.1. 1. 1. So 1. grapes 1. are worse than honey, even when they're transported so, from uh, Spain. And the honey's from So the it's UK. maybe like two, maybe three from mead. Mm. Grapes are worse than honey. No, oh, grapes are 1.1, 1. 1, did you say? <gasps> yes. So, honey. so honey's, honey's worse. worse. Honey is worse than grapes. So mead is worse than wine for yes. the planet. Yes, mead yeah, is worse than wine, so but not better. as bad as A lot cheese. better, a lot tastier. But, Again, but, yeah. the worse it is for the planet, the better it is. That does seem to be a running theme. However, beer is better than latte. I'm, I'm sorry. Just... Except Blu-rays are better for the planet than streaming, and Blu-rays are the superior format. So everyone should go out and buy physical media is what I'm saying. Ah, yeah. But Betamax. if you became, like, vegan cheese and mead, you wouldn't have any problems. But would you be able to rebrand? I don't know if well, I want to I do that. I don't vegan, think it would be authentic for us to <laughs> yeah. say we're I, a vegan I, show. I, I really appreciate where that's coming from. Like, <laughs> but uh, the whole point of meat and cheese is to make more people eat cheese but you could and be drink vegan meat. meat. No, vegan cheese and carton of meat. And like, how much more sustainable would you be? So what you're saying is we need to get Connor in every week. And we need to make him make vegan cheese. <laughs> and mead in cartons. Yeah, and mead in cartons. Yeah, so every week. It, is this like purely cow's cheese then? Could we maybe switch it for like goat's cheese goat's or camel cheese, cheese? Goat's cheese is better for the environment. Well, yeah, what about camel? <laughs> How much cheese I don't have a number for in front of me, unfortunately. That means it's, there's no carbon footprint on the camel. Camels are carbon neutral. <laughs> if you had Parmesan, that would be double as worse again. Parmesan's oh, but Parmesan's so nice. Parmesan's lovely. Yeah. It's the common theme, isn't it? The nicer something is, the worse it is for the planet. Yeah, which cheese was it that was made with, like, sheep's milk? Surely was that like Red Leicester or Stilton? No, 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 no. I don't I know. But surely, if you like, take go to the sustainability workshop, you know, me, re, do loads of other sustainability things. Surely that can offset you to have a, a little bit of cheese each week. Well, there's something I read that was really interesting. So, say you cycle to work. Yeah. But every day you cycle to work to give yourself the energy to cycle to work you eat a burger that is actually worse than driving to work oh okay but say if you like had how much would you have to do to make could you could you either make cheese just normal cheese less carbon free i think yeah anything you make locally will have you know a less less large carbon footprint so maybe we have to have more local cheese Anyway, I think we are going to have to leave soon. It was cool. Wensleydale was traditionally made with sheep's cheese, but in the modern day it is made with cow's milk. I think that is... Is that the end of the show? Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say about Change Agents UK, Sharp, before we wrap up? No, just that we're a recruitment and education charity based in Oakham, looking to give graduates, young people and employers those sustainability skills and knowledge that we spoke about today. But thank you so much for inviting me onto Mead and Cheese as well. Yeah. I feel very famous being allowed on here. And we've got a few things to think about with sustainability in Mead and Cheese, don't we, Corey? I mean, we definitely do, yeah. Um, Mead and Cheese will be a sustainable show. <laughs> um, by 
the end of next year, twenty when, when the show ends. Me, it, I'll, I'll be happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you for listening to the sustainability special of Mead and Cheese. Next week we will be discussing Mead and Cheese. And this has been Mead and Cheese. And thank you for joining us everyone today. And thank you to our lovely guests, Ewan and Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you.